That too. I got a notebook of ten years of like Raiders just misdrafts. Like they passed on uh, Le'Veon Bell. They passed on DeAndre Hopkins. They passed oh on God. Xavier How Xavier Rhodes. Uh, they passed on David Johnson. They passed on Travis Kelsey a couple times. Yeah. I, that notebook is oh man. It's See, called, it's called the towel. That's the Raider struggles. The the Chiefs struggles are. Either Y'all we get have, fast ass corners like Sandra Cummings trying to make him a safety and then it doesn't work no, out. Ours is either we have a great defense, terrible offense, or a great offense, terrible defense. When y'all have a terrible offense for the Chiefs, it's a sad day. I feel like the Chiefs should be that team that doesn't have a bad offense. No, because think about it. During the Derek Thomas days, our defense with him and Neil Smith, James Hasty, Dale Carter was nice, but our offense was bad. Who's our draft issue? Uh, McCauley Hardman. We had a we didn't have a first round pick. Oh, we okay. took him second round. And then you took. Did you take an old lineman third? Thorn, no, you took Thornhill. Thornhill was uh, uh second. Was our, he was our third round pick. Okay. Yeah. So no old line. No O line, nah. O-line you more loaded up on defense last year. More. Yeah, yeah. Last year we took Nandi, all six defensive players. Nandi, yeah, that weird dude with two last names. Uh, the six or seven guy. Yeah, Breland speaks. speaks. Uh, no, nah, we didn't take uh, compassing on that. That was the year before. Yeah, yeah. It was like some six foot seven defensive end. Yeah, from Villanova. He's uh, he's yeah, still yeah. there. He's solid. We took him two two Chris. years ago. Chris Jones being distracted, like that's a real four three front, and I think the Chiefs. I will say this. With the coverage linebackers that they have, all they got to do is just rush the passer. Yeah, if our pass rush can Frank Clark, do Chris what they Jones, did last year. Yeah. Uh, Emmanuel Ogba had a sack. Yep. He's got to be a good left defensive end. Because not only – what hurt us last year, we got sacks, but then it was times we have droughts of, like, pressures. Hopefully we can be – Top ten in sacks, and then still have a lot of pressures because then that's when that's going to help our corners and like help our safeties make the plays that they can make. Y'all not going to make no plays. Y'all getting ate up this Sunday. Oh, I can't wait. Okay, so Tyler it, Williams going bold predictions. Eight for, for any team. And two TDs. Bold predictions for any team because Sean McCoy had ten carries, I think eighty-one yards. Yeah. So that's you a, can pick the Raiders. You can pick the Chiefs. Actually, no. You pick the Raiders if you want, or you pick the Chiefs, or you just pick a totally different team. What's your take? What, what do you think? What's bold. a bold prediction for you? But you can't pick the Chiefs, and you can't pick the Raiders. Bold. Out of anything, um, Bengals make the playoffs. Damn. And, and yeah, win that division. Season. Yeah, you, We're yeah. talking about for the week. Yeah, for the oh, week. That's, oh, oh. that's big, but I'm going to hold you to it. Yeah. yeah no, nah, I just, I, the way Pittsburgh looked, and nah, I can't say they win the division because the Ravens will probably take that. Yeah. Uh, Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. Yeah, that's that's dope. Let's talk about it. But oh, for hot for this week, let me look at who's playing. My bold prediction. Uh, I say that. I got I got um, Aaron Rodgers having a big game versus the Vikings. That's normal. I can expect that. No, but, no, that's a good one. They just one, scored ten points. You know. And a lot of some people it, like, but they Damn. scored ten points because that Chicago Bears defense is legit. Yeah, but I think Packers make it two and zero. They they protect home and get this win versus the Vikings. Let me see my. That's that's my bold prediction because the Vikings looked great last week. Even though can you believe that, Kenny? That uh, Cousins threw the ball what ten times? Eight out of ten for ninety eight yards and a touchdown. And they won. And I for, passed like, on Dalvin Cook. Win. No, hey, I he, should have drafted him. He is looking nice. He's healthy. I passed on Marlon Mack too. I'm he's, really upset at myself. He's Jamal Charles, like when he's healthy and he's healthy, so he's nah, doing. Nah, bro, his thing. he's not Jamal Charles. He's uh, he's not as good, of course. But I have like a, he runs like Priest Holmes. Look, has a skill set like Le'Veon Bell. I give a bold prediction. Your boy McCoy goes over 100 yards on the Raiders this week Sunday. Over 100 okay. Not like 3 yards a carry 100 Like 5 a pop 6 a pop He gonna He gonna, he gonna slash him He gonna put some work in He gonna turn into Old Shady he McCoy is in, he, he is in the system That had him like On a first battle Hall of Famer pace but Basically Cause he would never Leave Philly He won me my league That league, that year 1696 rushing yards Something like that <sighs> And really like That's why I don't like Chip Kelly it, Cause you ruined The franchise all because uh, Riley <laughs> now he's off the college. Riley to ruin White Boy one. Nelson, <laughs> he's ruined that one. He ruined yeah. San Francisco, and now he's off the college. Ruined UCLA. I wonder what players on UCLA are saying the N word and not getting in trouble for it. 
because we know what happened with uh, <laughs> Riley Cooper. Riley Cooper, yeah, yeah, that's deep. <laughs> but yeah, but you told me to give a Chiefs a Chiefs bowl prediction. I give I give you that because Shady when he went there, I was like, oh. Mm. But I, Damian Williams gonna get some of those. He had more touches last game, so Damian I Williams, yards. I think, is more your receiver. Yeah, yeah. Now, Shady strictly Shady, a the point. reason yeah. he was yeah. there was be, like the reason he had the game he had even was because he was able to. Like it was like his regular. Oh, Shady, we gonna do your, your, your normal stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are gonna do what you. And now do that best. he's figured out a few more schemes and some coverage and some, pe- bro. Yeah, no, I'm hoping so. I like, I, I was very worried about hey, you, that. Hey, you heard it here first, guys. No, I'm, 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 I'm honest. I'm not gonna lie. Like I, ain't. I got a bold prediction. Let's hear it. And this dude actually helped me out a lot in fantasy last year, but I dropped him this week. I dropped him. Uh, after last week, because the Redskins healthy scratched them, AP gonna go off for a hundred against the Cowboys. That's not a bold prediction. We knew that's gonna come. Nah, nah, hell no, he wasn't even activated last year, bro. Like, he we, played. He, he went over a thousand yards AP last year. Played. Early in the season, he was does killing. this. He does this. So for like the next few weeks, he's gonna average between hey. eighty to one hundred and twenty yards a game. If he do and that, then he gonna get. Then they not gonna give him the ball. Yeah, no. That's remarkable if he does that. He's one of the great. He's, he's the greatest the, modern day running goes. back. Like I think he's better than LT. Nah, LT is better all around. Yeah, but he could catch at a what moment. What happened to our boy? Was it just the injuries? Was just the, was the injuries towards the end? I mean, he after got injured, he literally he's was old. nine yards away from the all time rushing record, and I blame who? Uh, you talking about LT? Or you talking about a- AP? 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 I think it just it came down to politics. They forced him out of Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same way they forced Randy Moss out of Minnesota in his sure. prime. Yeah. And then teams just like, oh, we don't want him. Like, no. Where did he go right after Minnesota? <sighs> he was a free agent for a minute. Man, he was. He didn't even went to the Saints. And then the Saints didn't use him. He's like, give me the, like him. He shouted at um, yeah. Sean Payton on the yeah, sideline. I remember that. And it's like, bro, that wasn't a good fit because they still have Mark Ingram. And Mark Ingram is not Did he ever play for the Niners? No, no. Uh-huh. But he Redskins was he somewhere before the Redskins? I don't think so. I think it was just straight up Saints free agency for a while. We just wanted him to be on other teams. He could have been a Raider. Yeah, I was hoping they did that after better. Marshawn. And then like I, he is a couple teams. I think he would have been perfect in Green Bay. Yeah, you got Jamal Williams out of BYU. Yeah, Vikings, Saints. Cardinals Oh yeah Cardinals He, oh, yeah. he like, did Cause David thing. Johnson's year Yeah we like to forget Those years Yeah the Cardinals The Cardinals were like just bad it. They couldn't block They couldn't pass protect Hey you know who's my favorite Running back In the history of the game Mark Allen He's one of them No Marshall Falk Yeah Hands down Of course Yeah Marshall, Marshall Cause I got Marshall. to actually Watch him do A thousand his yards A thousand, ru- thousand yards Receiving and rushing Dude was nice I didn't even appreciate it When I saw Like I like, I was too I young moved to, out, I just yeah. knew he was He, he was like Oh I'm playing with the Rams because they're good. Like Marshall Hall can do everything. Yeah. I, I use them mostly as a runner. Screen. I didn't even <laughs> throw him. Like Screen. I, Trunk Cannon was, was nice. backup and he had like 97. What's speed. crazy is the fact that Roger Craig is in the Hall of Famer. That always trips me out. He he yeah. was the first one to do the thousand thousand, and he was good out beside. Yeah, being a back. It's like that's they, they why punish I, him for playing for the Niners. That's why I'm like I kind of have a beef with Terrell Davis going in because I'm like so if that's the case. Yeah. I'm putting in Edger and James. Yeah, and Roger Craig should for sure be in the You got to put in cats from the Eras who were great, too. Yeah. Just because they didn't get hurt. Like, TD had two really, really great years. Then, Yeah, the injuries, but yeah. I can't sit up here and pretend like, oh, no. But anyway. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, you know, all this, all these players making all this money and doing all this great stuff, let's talk about some amateurism. Let's hear it. Alright, so if y'all haven't been paying attention For those of you who don't know By the way, shout out to X-Squad Affiliates Shout out to Terry T-Biggs From Full Press Coverage Full Press Raiders Coverage The whole nine We love y'all, all our affiliates uh, California This just happened a couple days ago California, uh, the bill passed that NCAA athletes get to profit from their name and likeness. Newsom has about 30 days, I think, to sign it into law. Uh, 
it's pretty much got national attention because LeBron, Draymond Green, a bunch of other athletes have got behind him praising the California, praising California because the potential would be that all California athletes can now profit from their name. They can profit from their likeness. They can get money from that and not lose their scholarships and it won't be, you know, they won't get, oh, excuse me, in trouble for it. Their names, images, and likeness. And it was passed by the state legislature. Uh, and now it's on Gavin, Governor Gavin Newsom's desk. And pretty much the Senate gave the final approval to the Senate bill, uh, 206, by Nancy Skinner. She's a Democrat from Berkeley. In a 39-0 vote, and the Assembly passed. It went to the Assembly, and it passed, the bill was passed 73-0 to 0 on Monday. And pretty much the NCAA pushed back against it. They're like, this will kill amateur athletics if it becomes law. And they sent a, a letter to Newsom pretty much calling the legislation unconstitutional and harmful, which is really funny coming from the most unconstitutional and harmful uh, nonprofit organization outside of like mega churches, the NCAA. Because, you know, they're like a governing body outside of that. And no, no. Yeah, but anyway, so Mark Emmert, the president of the NCAA, twenty other board members, they um they signed a letter that they gave to the governor, and pretty much they're warning that if this becomes law in California, Newsom again has like I think thirty days or whatever between ten and thirty days to sign this in law. Uh, they're going to ban all California colleges, universities from competing in NCAA events. So that means even if USC or Oregon or Washington, whoever wins out the Pac-12 in any sport, uh, they will not be allowed to compete for national championship, bowl games, none of that. They will be persona non grata. They will be X'd out. Now, the NCAA has already lost antitrust lawsuits. Um, shout out to Ed O'Bannon. Um, he's, he's kind of the reason why, like, athletes were supposed to get a settlement check from all those NCAA football games. I just want to know, what's y'all take on this? Where do you come down on this becoming law in California? And does it necessarily mean, like, that because, like, this becomes a big deal, that is it, is it going to be a good thing that, California just might be blackballed from college sports and like nah. NCAA. It's, it's no way that you can do it. I I, I love the uh, the entire bill. Uh, I think that players deserve. Man, these guys deserve to get money. If if you go to UCLA, you know the year that Lonzo Ball was there wearing number two and he's lighting it up, killing and everybody's going to the store. Let me give me a number two UCLA jersey. Why are they wearing a number two UCLA jersey? I know you can say his name's not on the back. Bro, why are they wearing a number two? Just like you get a top recruit and he goes there and he wants he's a quarterback and he says, I want to wear uh, number 28 like Doug Flutie. Um, and he he's lighting it up. You think pe- people are buying UCLA's 28 jersey because of that quarterback. They're not yeah. buying it because it's the UCLA jersey. And, oh, I like the number 28. No, they're buying it for that player. Yeah. So that player deserves to get their due cut of what they're bringing to the table and bringing to their campus and bringing to the NCAA. Yeah. California is like one of those trendsetters. And I think we're like, the lead, we're like putting the pressure on the NCAA. You know, like I think it's more like we're going to apply the pressure. Ball's in your court now. What you going to do about it? Because eventually, like, other states are going to get on board. They're going to f- fall in and see how it works out. Because if you want to blackball the ca- California, we'd be like, all right, we do this on our own. They can't we got enough that. media and attention and stuff like that to where they can just be like, oh, you're not in the NCAA no more. I guess we're going to call it. Everybody's a uh, junior college at this point. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to X out USC and all their history? Yeah, no, you're not. You're not going to do that. Oh yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll the make track our championships. Like, like USC cool. track star owns like the world's fastest record in the hundred. Man, there's enough colleges just in this state from the Pac-12 that to where like if you pull them out, you'd be like, man, I don't even really watch no more. California like has there enough GP has the GDP equivalent to like I think a hundred small countries. Like they. Like they have the GDP that is we greater have, than we at have least a hundred countries. We had to be the ones to go. We had to be the ones that actually 
started this because 